The Sahara isn't a permanent sandbox, it's a climate flipbook. Earth's axis slowly wobbles, known as precession, on about 26,000-year cycles, shifting where and when sunlight heats the hemispheres. When northern hemisphere summers align just right, the West African monsoon surges north, rain returns, and dunes surrender to grasslands, lakes, and rivers. This African humid period last happened about 6 to 11,000 years ago. Rock art with hippos and crocodiles wasn't ancient graffiti, it was wildlife drawing class. Expect the desert to rewild into savanna, studded with mega lakes, migrating herds, and mosquitoes who think sunscreen is a seasoning. It'll flip back to desert later, because orbital mechanics never sign a 30-year lease. Swap your sandboard for a canoe and maybe a hippo insurance policy. Ready for Green Sahara? Take two. Earth's magnetic field is a lava-powered mood ring. Deep in the core, swirling liquid iron drives a geodynamo that sometimes stutters and reverses. North becomes south, compasses throw tantrums, and maps go out of fashion. The last full reversal, 780,000 years ago, didn't end life. It just made paleomagnetists very happy. Reversals likely unfold over thousands of years, with the field weakening and sprouting multiple poles like a hedgehog. Consequences? Harsher space weather for satellites and power grids, higher radiation at aviation altitudes, and GPS behaving like it's had two espressos too many. Today's South Atlantic anomaly hints the field's not perfectly symmetrical, more dad bod than six pack. Civilization survives, your compass app cries. If your fridge magnets start pointing south, maybe don't rely on them anymore. Meet Gleason, 710, a small orange star cruising toward a hair-raising flyby about 0.06 to 0.07 light years, approximately 13,000 astronomical units from the sun. That misses the planets by a lot, but plows straight through the Oort cloud, the solar system's icy comet reservoir. Gravity says scatter, sending a rain of long period comets inward for millions of years. Most will miss, some won't. Expect spectacular meteor showers and the occasional civilization ruining bowling ball. On the bright side, literally, Gliese 710 will shine in our night sky roughly as bright as Venus. On the dim side, insurance companies will invent comet clauses. Astronomy gets a front row seat, geology gets new craters, future you gets anxiety. Fireworks or firing squad? How lucky do you feel, Homo sapiens 2.0? Beetlejuice, Orion's red supergiant drama queen, is living on borrowed hydrogen. When its core can't juggle fusion anymore, gravity wins and a core collapse supernova turns the star into a daylight visible beacon, brighter than a full moon for weeks to months. Danger to Earth? None. At about 500 to 650 light years away, we're outside the hazardous splash zone. The night sky, however, will grow a temporary second sun, and daytime will pull a party trick. See a star at lunch. Expect neutrinos to arrive hours before light, observatories to binge on data, and conspiracy forms to spontaneously combust. After the show, a neutron star, or black hole, remains, and Orion loses its celebrity shoulder pad. Wearing sunglasses at night for once is not entirely ridiculous. Phobos, Mars's inner moon, orbits so close it's basically trespassing. Tidal forces are dragging it inward by centimeters per year. Cross the Roche limit and the potato-shaped rubble pile shreds into a dusty, rocky ring. Simulations suggest a wide, faint halo could persist for tens of millions of years, subtle from Earth, jaw-dropping from the Martian surface, where bright arcs would slash the sky at dawn and dusk. Deimos, the chill outer sibling, stays intact. Phobos goes full confetti cannon. 
Future colonists will get postcard views and non-stop geology homework as debris sifts down. Mars, no oceans, weak air, stunning jewelry. Move over, Saturn, the red planet has new bling. A Phobos confetti party equals rings. Clean up not included. Next stop, Saturn's accessories, currently in their going out of style era. Saturn's rings look eternal, they're not. Micrometeoroids dirty the ice, sunlight charges dust, and the planet's magnetic field funnels material inward as ring rain that literally falls into Saturn's atmosphere. Add collisions and sputtering from moon geysers and you've got a slow motion drain. Best estimates put the show's end on the order of about 100 million years, give or take several awkward zeros. Translation. Humans evolved during a rare sparkle window and immediately invented telescopes to gawk at it. Nice timing, species. Future sky watchers may see a pale, banded gas giant with only ghostly ring remnants. Saturn without rings is like a lion without a mane, still majestic, less glam. Enjoy the cosmic hula hoop while it lasts. Blink and the crown is dissolved into the planet. Plate tectonics never sleeps, it just slow cooks. Over a few hundred million years, continents drift back together into a new supercontinent, often nicknamed Pangaea Ultima. Another possible title is Pangaea Proxima. Geology loves a reboot. Collisions raise mountain chains that make the Himalayas look modest, while subduction zones and superplumes spike volcanism. Pack in higher solar luminosity and vast continental interiors far from oceanic AC, and you get lethal wet bulb temperatures where sweating doesn't work. Coasts become refuges, inland turns into a convection oven with thunder. Biodiversity, craters, desert sprawl, and saying it's a dry heat becomes a war crime. Civilization, if it's still a thing, hugs shorelines and underground real estate. Ready for Pangaea, the reunion tour, now with fewer mammals. Totality is a cosmic coincidence. The sun is about 400 times wider than the moon, but about 400 times farther, so their apparent sizes match. For now, tidal friction slows Earth's spin, and the moon pays by drifting 3.8 centimeters farther each year. Fast forward about 600 to 650 million years, and the moon's apparent diameter shrinks just enough that it can't fully cover the sun. Annular ring of fire eclipses survive, true totality retires. The eerie midday night sky with planets and corona blazing? Collector's edition, already mint condition rare. If you saw April 8, 2024, congratulations, you caught the deluxe cut. Future astronomers will envy our goosebumps. Farewell, blackout. Hello, permanent ring of fire. Craving spectacle? Wait till the night sky spans the whole sky, literally. The Milky Way and Andromeda are on a slow motion collision course. In about four to five billion years, their halos interpenetrate, tidal arms unfurl, central black holes eventually merge, and the mess relaxes into a swollen elliptical nicknamed Milkometa. Don't picture head-on star pileups, Space is mostly empty, so individual stars mostly miss. But orbits get scrambled, the sun, if still bound, could migrate or be flung outward. Night skies for any surviving beings will be ridiculous. Spiral arms arcing horizon to horizon. The biosphere won't be around to clap though, the sun will be heating Earth into a toast rack long before the galactic fireworks. It's the prettiest show no one sees. Seat selection, everywhere, obstructed by awe. Popcorn optional, existential dread included. Hydrogen runs low, the core compresses, the outer layers balloon. The sun swells into a red giant more than 100 times its current size, roasting Mercury and Venus and either engulfing or sterilizing Earth. Long before that finale, within about one billion years, Rising solar luminosity likely evaporates oceans and shreds the climate. 
At peak drama, the sun sheds its outer layers into a glowing planetary nebula, while the core becomes a white dwarf the size of Earth with the mass of the sun. No fusion, just residual heat fading for trillions of years. Our solar system ends not with a bang, but with a glamorous smoke ring and a cosmic paperweight. Sunscreen SPF, why bother? Bring marshmallows, and by marshmallows, I mean goodbye. Dark energy drives accelerated expansion, pushing distant galaxies beyond our cosmic event horizon. Given enough time, on the order of about 100 billion years, the cosmic microwave background redshifts so long that no detector can catch it, and almost all galaxies outside our local group slip from view. Future astronomers marooned in a lonely island universe will infer a static, eternal cosmos. Big Bang? Never heard of her. Nucleosynthesis, expansion, and dark energy, without multiple lines of evidence, they vanish into philosophical fan fiction. Science becomes archaeology in the dark, and the universe's origin story turns into a whisper lost to distance. The irony is that we currently see and know more about the cosmos than our descendants will ever be able to ascertain. It's like deleting your search history, except it deletes you. Ready for the universe's ultimate Irish goodbye? If this felt like a cosmic spoiler reel, perfect. Drop a like, tell me which apocalypse you'd pre-order, and subscribe to Cosmo Binge. We time travel so you don't have to. Calories burned, zero. Minds blown, several.